everyone come on in and we will get started at 1215. Come in, everybody. We'll get started in about two minutes. Alrighty, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Penn State Berks Line Side Chats. My name is Dawn Pfeiffer Wrights, and I'm one of the three Line Side Chat moderators that have been with you all semester. Um, I work alongside with Dr. Ryan Hassler, who is our presenter today, and also Sonia De La Cueto from the Learning Center. So come on in and welcome to our campus. Glad you can join us today. Before we get started, a couple of uh, little housekeeping items. Uh, we will take some questions and answers through the Q&A feature at the end of the chat. We will not be utilizing the raise hand feature um, or chat today. So just keep that in mind. Um, once our presentation concludes, there will be a discussion that will be facilitated by Dr. Hassler. And uh, we are recording today's session, so that way we can revisit the topic and um, it will be available on our archives. So I am now excited to introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Ryan Hassler. Dr. Hassler is going to talk with you about some really timely information. And um, he is going to be the concluding session in our we are FYS series this fall. So we thank all of you that have been here for repeated We Are chats. And um, Dr. Hassler will give you some ideas of what's to come in the spring semester with the Lion Side chats. Welcome, Dr. Hassler. Are you ready to share your screen? I'm all set. All right, then once you have that situated, I'm going to actually be heading out everyone and moving on to another meeting. Thank you, Thanks. everyone. Good luck, Dr. Hassler. Thank you, Don. All right, so um, welcome everybody again. If this is the first time that you've been in, uh, we are in one of our Lionside chats or you've been a repeat offender and have showed up to a lot, um, uh, welcome back. Um, what I wanna do today is talk about uh, final exams. Um, this, whether you've, you're a freshman and it's the first time you're experiencing final exams here at Penn State Berks at college, um, or you've been, um, you know, you're an upperclassman and you've been through this already. I think you'll get some tips here. Um, I know uh, Don just mentioned that we were going to take question and answers at the end. I'm flying solo here though today because my other two colleagues uh, have meetings. So I have the Q&A open. So as we go through, there's different parts. As we go through this, um, because it's not necessarily sort of a, a, a whole co collective, there's different parts of this presentation, please feel free to put the questions in. I'll try to answer them as they come in. Um, again, I'm, I don't have anybody else here to have a conversation with me at the end, like our typical line side chats. Um, and if there's a question that you have specific about something I'm talking about at the time, um, please just feel free to throw that into the Q&A and I'll try to uh, field questions um, as I go. Uh, so really, the focus here is to talk about studying for final exams. Um, if you don't know uh, myself, I'm an associate teaching um, uh, faculty member uh, of mathematics. I teach the statistics classes here at Berks. 
Um, and so you're going to get probably some of the perspective of a final exam from the math um, perspective here, but you will also get um, some information and I'm going to, you know, even though I'm going to contextualize some things in terms of math, uh, I will talk about much broader topics as well. Some of this stuff maybe you know, some of this stuff maybe you don't know, it's just trying to get you more information and this is just another avenue to disseminate that information. So first and foremost, again, we're going to start basic. The idea of finals, uh, final exam, final exams are held next week. So there are 15 weeks in the semester. Uh, week 16 uh, is the finals exam week. Uh, that starts next Monday, December 14th. It goes to Friday, December 18th. Now, uh, many of you probably won't have finals on the 18th. We try to get finals done the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. There will be some finals for that Thursday, December 17th, but um, the finals are probably heavily for the first couple of days. Uh, of the week. So uh, that is when finals week is. Um, I will mention this here that uh, to find your final schedule, you should go log into Lion Path. And we're going to talk about the schedule because the schedule might not be the same time that your classes um, are meeting currently. Um, with final exams being the 14th to the 18th, which is next week, um, I would like to put this out there just because of um, the benefit for you as students. You should not be having final exams this current week. All right. We as faculty members are told that finals week is for finals. And technically, the week before finals week, the week we just started today, week 15, we really are not allowed to give you assignments that are worth a, a, you know, a, a large portion of the grade. We're supposed to, you know, I don't want to say take it easy, but give you less work this week so that you can prepare for finals next week. Now, maybe you have a final paper or final presentation and you've been working on that, and maybe that's due this week. But in terms of a final exam, the assignments and the exams are um, from Penn State supposed to be held next week. So what you would like to do is uh, log into your Lion Path. You should then be able to click on your undergraduate students, click on your final exam schedule. When, when you log into Lion Path, you should make sure you're on the correct semester. Because if you scheduled for next semester already, you might have to change it to fall 2020. And then if you select final exam schedule, again, if you're a freshman and haven't gone through this, maybe you don't know where to find this information. Here is what my final exam schedule looks like. Now I'm teaching more classes than this, but some of my classes don't have final exams and or the classes I taught were asynchronous. So there's not a scheduled time for them. But when I click on my exam schedule, this is what shows on my end as a faculty member, you will get um, the same sort of looking um, screen here. I want to again comment, it's on the next slide as well, but I wanna make uh, you aware that even of professor's perspective, this first class, my biostat, the first time I meet with those students any week is Monday at 8 a.m. So their final exam actually happens at the time of their regularly scheduled class, except for the fact that it's only a 50 minute class and all of our exam time slots are an hour and 50 minutes. So um, that class meets when you traditionally would think since I meet with them every Monday at 8 a.m. But my STAT 200 classes, actually my exam for them are on Tuesday from 12 to 1.50 and neither of these two classes meet during that time. So on the next slide here, I want to make sure that um, you, if this is the first time you're going through your finals, make sure um, that you are determining when your finals are. Hopefully your faculty members have been giving you that information, uh, but you can find a collective uh, final exam schedule in your Lion Path. And your exam schedule is most likely not your class schedule. So I know, especially if you've been uh, asynchronous or you've been online synchronous for the past semester, you get such in a routine that this is when we have class on Tuesday at this time, your final exam is most likely not at the time of your class. So you wanna make sure, you know, write them down, get a piece of paper, make sure that you really have a schedule put together for next week um, because you don't wanna be missing your final exam. Um, the second thing that I will comment on, and this is new for my presentation here today because of uh, where we're at in terms of this online environment, your exam might not be in your regular, if we were in person, 
nobody is now because uh, we don't have classes in person these last two weeks. But if we were in person, so next semester, hopefully, or the following semester when everything's back to normal, um, your actual exam might not be in the physical classroom that your class is in either. And so similar to that here in the remote environment, your classroom that you log into for Zoom might not be the classroom or the place where you have to log in for your final exam. I know it might seem you know, ridiculous or it might be hard, but when I give my STAT 200 exam, I have multiple sections taking the exam at the same time. So I, have to, I had to make a new link that I could provide to everybody to get into that one class. So my suggestion would be if you have two exams, three exams, whatever, get a schedule put together, copy and paste the Zoom um, links so that you have that schedule saved with the links so that you're ready to go um, next week for finals. Uh, but the best thing you can do is communicate. Hopefully your faculty members are communicating with you, um, but your exams and the Zoom room slash link might not be the same as you're used to. You don't wanna find that out 10 minutes into the exam and you're sitting in a classroom with nobody there, all right? Um, you might have different directions from class to class for proctoring the exam. So I know for my stat classes, um, so I make students, you know, log in, their camera's on, and I'm monitoring them as they take their exam. That might not be the case. Some of you might not have to log into Zoom. So make sure you, again, have information for each of your classes on what your expectations are and how the exam is going to run. Because on top of it being remote, it's also more difficult this semester because different faculty members are doing different things being that we're remote, okay? Um, if we were face-to-face, -face, you walk into the classroom, I give you the exam, I collect it, seems to be what it typically um, has happened. But what you need to make sure is that your expectations from each class um, are, are given to you. And if they're not, you need to make sure that um, you're not just missing them somewhere or the professor, you know, reach out to your faculty member. Um, and again, exams are an hour and 50 minutes. Uh, my suggestion would be to make sure you show up early. You know, pop into the Zoom room 15, 20 minutes early. I mean, you can keep your camera off or whatever at the beginning, but make sure you um, are logged in, ready to go, so that either when the professor starts giving an oral exam, I know there's some professors who are doing that via Zoom, or whether it opens up on Canvas or whatever the means are, uh, make sure that in that hour and 15 minutes, you are optimizing the amount of time you actually can be working on the exam. So log in early, make sure that everything is set to go. Again, as I'm going through this, put any questions or answers into the chat box. Um, if you have q and I'll entertain those as I go. Um, again, I think probably many of you are freshmen since we advertise this to our um, FYS classes. That doesn't mean you have to be a freshman here, but if you're not, um, if you're a freshman and haven't gone through finals, you might be a little bit anxious. Um, I had a student this morning in my class um, and I tried to mention it in all my classes, um, but a student this morning in my uh, one class said, what do I do, Dr. Hassler? I have two exams scheduled at the same time. That happens more than what you would think. You as the student are responsible for that. Now, you of course can't take two exams at the same time, right? That's not physically possible. But you are responsible for coordinating with your faculty members what tests you're gonna take when and when you're gonna do a makeup for the other one. So if you haven't checked your final exam schedule, you need to do so because yes, when we create the final exam schedule, we try to optimize it because remember, we typically only have one hour classes and our finals are two hours. So we can't stick to the regular class schedule, which means that some students might get doubled up in terms of an exam. We try to, our registrar does a great job trying to minimize that, but it happens. A student in my class this morning said, hey, I have my stat exam and a, chem is, a chemistry exam at the same time. What do I do? Okay, so the onus is on you as the student to coordinate. So I'll tell you what I do as a faculty member. I say to my students, it's up to you. If you want to take my exam this time, that's fine. And you can coordinate and change your other exam. Or I will be flexible. And here are the other times that I'm giving exams. 
So being that we're remote, I still have to proctor you to take the exam for two hours. So I would give you my other time slots for my other sections of my other classes so that you can still be in Zoom in a testing environment. You're just taking a different test than the other people. Um, so that's what I'm doing, but you need to coordinate that with your faculty members and you need to do that now. So if you haven't checked, and most of you that won't be an issue, but if you haven't checked, double check to make sure you don't have two exams scheduled at the same time. And if you do, reach out. Um, your faculty members are told that they have to be flexible. And if you have two scheduled, they have to be um, able to, they, they have to be willing to change and give you a makeup at a different time. Now, some faculty members are probably more um, prone to being flexible than others. So, you know, you will know yourself who you can approach and what might be best for you for switching one of those exams. Uh, but look up your exam schedule. The other thing here in terms of conflicts that I wanna bring up is there is um, an overload, a final exam overload policy. Um, I did not update this since last year. I'm pretty sure it's the same um, if I look at it, but the traditional sort of idea here, if I can highlight with my annotation or underline um, is, uh, you may request to reschedule a final exam if, um, let's see, where is it at here? Um, you have three exams um, that are either back to back to back, or you have three exams within one calendar day. So you as the student do not have to take three final exams in any one day. If you have three scheduled, you are more than willing and more than welcome to take them. Say there's three on Monday and one on Tuesday and you just want to get them out of the way. That's fine. You can do that. But if there are three exams scheduled on Monday or specifically back to back to back exams, uh, faculty members um, are, 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 are responsible or are required to let you switch one of those exams. Okay, so it would be your choice. You would approach that faculty member and say, hey, I have three exams scheduled. You know, of course, don't lie about it because the faculty member can check your exam schedule. Um, but hey, I have three exams scheduled. I really would prefer if I can take yours at a different time. And then you would coordinate that with them. But we are trying to look out for the student in terms of overload and the amount of, you know, cognitive load that you can take at any one um, given time. Uh, so if you have questions, you know, there's this um, final exam overload uh, policy um, and you can, you know, if you have any specific questions about anything here, you can always reach out to me or um, other faculty members, I'm sure will be more than happy to help you figure out this. Any questions with anything there? Again, I don't see anything, so I'm going to keep going unless you, unless anybody submits the question. Um, also unique this year. Now, to some of you, it's not unique because you were here, maybe if you're not a freshman, you were here in the spring. But unique this year to most of you, um, since you're freshmen, um, is this idea of alternative grading. Um, so the university has agreed to do alternative grading. You probably have heard a lot about it. This semester, because of the remote environment, it might not be, you know, you might have some classes online you wouldn't prefer to be there and you might not feel as if you're getting the most, you know, out of the learning environment. So. My strongest suggestion is do not go MIA, missing in action, if you don't know what that means, after finals. You have responsibilities after finals. I know you're you know, thinking, oh, the next semester doesn't start till January 20th, what is it, 19th, 20th? I'd have to look it up, um, that third week of January. But you have responsibilities that you probably wanna make sure you take advantage of um, with what's called this alternative grading. So over here on the side, I got these important dates. December 23rd um, is when you will see on Lion Path an alternative grading um, selection where you will be able to, like we did in the spring, again, if you are a freshman, you didn't see this, but when you log into your Lion Path, you will have an optional tool that will allow you to alter your grades for the fall semester. December 23rd, that opens. So that's a couple of days um, before uh, the Christmas holiday. Um, and that goes until January 12th. So you have a window of what, about 20 days or so. But on January 12th at 1159, if you didn't change the alternate grades, and I'll explain just briefly about that. If you didn't do the alternate grading on January 12th, um, you will not be able to do it after that. 
Okay, so you have this window. So don't go MIA and think, okay, let me put you know school away for a month and not worry about till the next semester, um, because you have that window of uh, changing those grades. So alternate grading. Um, I don't want to go, I could do a whole session on that. Um, hopefully your faculty members have uh, shared some of this with you. I know you probably got something from Mr. Webb through the student, um, student um, success. Um, but if you want to know a great resource for any and all of this information, um, probably the best resource collectively, not just through Berks, but through Penn State, is this keeplearning.psu.edu. So I'm going to just very briefly open this up um, just to show that to you. So give me one second to get that open. Keeplearning.psu.edu. And on that page, you will find a bunch of information, of course, about keeping uh, learning during you know, the pandemic. Um, learning topics, frequently asked questions, all kinds of university resources, um, lots and lots of great information. But the alternative grading is posted here with all the specific details about what that is. Again, I'm not gonna go in depth here, but there is alternative grading and there's like frequently asked questions, um, all kinds of information here. The idea is that you can, if you say you got a, a C in a class, you know, of course, especially if you're a freshman that might hurt your GPA um, that you might need for an entrance to major or something. Um, but you might want to say, okay, I successfully passed that class without getting the letter grade. So pretty much what the alternative grading is, is it's a tool that you can replace classes that maybe are a little bit lower um, grade that you got, and it might be because of this online remote environment, um, but it won't hurt your GPA. You will get the successful credits, you just don't have that um, uh, for your um, GPA. Now, there's lots and lots of other things, so I'm not here to explain all of that. Um, hopefully you can read through the policy. Um, you each would have an advisor, so you can um, reach out to your advisor. And I also, you know, I advise my engineering ahead students, but you can always reach out to me if you wanna, you know, meet individually. We have a great advising center. Um, what you wanna make sure you do is you wanna make sure that if you change a grade, say from a, a C to satisfactory or something like that, you wanna make sure that that doesn't set you up for problems in the future. And by that, I mean for your entrance to major, especially if you're freshmen, say you're um, you know, in Schmiel going up, trying to go up to Schmiel, um, the business college at Penn State or engineering uh, entrance to major going up to University Park. Um, there's information here about what you can and what you can't do um, for your replacements. There's some things that you can do and some things that you can't do in terms of the grades. So I know there's a lot there. My suggestion would be don't even think about right now, alternative grading, do the best that you can right now with your final exams, finishing out the semester. And then on December 23rd, log back in, see where you're at, and then either make those informed decisions based on reading the alternative grading policy, schedule a meeting with your advisor, reach out to the advising center. You can you know, shoot me an email. I could always help you as well. Um, in general, I don't want to say this is across the board, but as I'm working with students, I typically tell students, if you have a B or better, there's probably not a great reason to do alternative grading, right? A B is a 3.0. I mean, um, you know, if you're trying to get 4.0s and they drop a couple, I mean, but if you have a B or better, you're, you're probably on a good path for a decent GPA, um, and so that's a very, very blanketed, you know, overarching, every unique uh, situation is unique. Um, but, you know, the C's or maybe you get a D and you don't need a C for that class, you know, can replace that maybe with a satisfactory as well. Any questions with that? Again, I'm not an expert with the system, the alternative grading system. I haven't read everything in depth. I mean, when I advise, I pulled up and the, the, my students, I work through it. Uh, but there's uh, hopefully you've heard information about that. Don't go MIA. Okay, I'm gonna keep going here. So that's all just sort of a bunch of information about uh, sort of, I would say the background about the final exams. Let's now look at um, how to study. So this is sort of more of the cognitive approach. What my suggestions would be for trying to figure out how to navigate the amount of information that you need for finals week. It might be different being that we're remote and you know some professors might be 
going more towards projects as opposed to the exams. Um, but this talk is really in terms of final exams. So um, I'll give you a minute here to just read through this. I'm not gonna put up the poll, um, but uh, I'll read through this with you. What's the most important factor in successful learning? Okay, so some people think, well, I can learn anything if I desire to learn it. If I, if I really you know, try to do it, I, I can do very well. Uh, that's actually not the most successful thing. Uh, some people say, if you just really, really are detailed and you pay super close attention to what you study, you know, you can do very well. And yeah, that's probably the truth, but that's not the most important factor. If I study 25 hours for this test, I would be good to go. Now, the amount of time you study is important. I know I saw a couple of my stat students here. Um, my stat 200 is a four credit exam or four credit class, okay? During a regular week, that means you should be spending, you know, two to three hours per eight to 10 hours a week doing homework, projects, reading, all those sorts of things. So to, you know, worry about an exam, um, I mean, 12, 15 hours, I don't think that's unheard of. Between now and the next time my exam is, there's, or the final exam, that's eight days, an hour and a half a day. There you go, you get up to 12, 13 hours uh, real quickly. Uh, but that's not the most important thing. Um, learning the way your learning style is not important. Right here is actually the most important thing that cognitive research has shown to be the most important factor in successful learning. And that's the idea of how you study or what you think about when you study. So most of my research is in math education and teaching and learning of math. And so um, I do a lot with learning. Um, let me go through and show you um, some suggestions about what to do. I know I'm framing this from a math perspective, um, but you can apply this in your other classes, whether it be history, um, you know, psychology, whatever. Um, I'm gonna skip this. This was you know, the, the example that I was gonna show about what you think about. What you think about, if you want to, you know, get it down to sort of as, you know, black and white, two options, you have what we call a shallow processing, or you have what I will call deep processing, okay? How you study what you think about. So if you're somebody that just like reads pieces of paper, um, and you try to st stare at your piece of paper, and you try to memorize facts, you are doing what I call the shallow level of understanding. And if you're a high school or if you're a freshman who just came out of high school, this is probably what you are used to. You memorize something, you got it ready to go, you look for it a couple hours before the test, you put it on the test, you forget about it and you move on. Um, I'm hoping through the faculty members that you have encountered this semester um, at Berks that you're realizing that we care way more about big conceptual deep understanding. And so memorization, if you're in a math class and you think I'm gonna sit here and read 15 hours of my notes and just read through it, okay? That's called shallow levels, right? Without doing, without rewriting your notes, without making notes, just reading a math textbook, that's shallow. They're superficial aspects that rely on memorization. And so if that's how you try to study, and then you also are the person that would come to me and say, hey, Dr. Hassler, I blank on exams. I don't know what, I, you know, I, I felt like I knew everything and then I blanked. The reason I, you blanked in my mind is because, and from what cognitive research shows, is you have done a shallow level of preparation. You can be the most motivated student you want and really committed lots of hours if the way you are approaching the studying is not deep, if it's shallow, it's not going to work out very nicely for most of you. I reference this when I'm working to, with students all the time. I say something like, did you learn how to ride a bike? And they say, yes. Did you memorize how to ride a bike? No. If you get on a bike, if you know how to ride a bike, let's assume you do, or you know how to swim, if I throw you in a pool, do you, are you able to swim or, or you are you ever going to forget how to swim? Are you ever going to forget how to ride a bike? And the answer is probably not. You're not going to forget because you didn't memorize how to do it. You learned how to do it, 
right? You had some support along the way. You had those little floaties, you had training wheels on your bike. Um, but if you are trying to memorize as opposed to having a deeper level of understanding, um, the exams uh, probably are not gonna be very um, uh, nice to you in terms of your grades. Let's talk about then how do we shift from this just memorizing to you know thinking and deeping deep level of understanding. So a subjective meaning, you know, what does this mean to you? Make it more personal and make some connections. Um, I just kind of put that there, but I'm gonna go into this deep. I, you know, have this idea of how do you study, apply something in terms of going from a surface level memorization to a deeper level. I have four components. Um, and we're going to practice this real briefly um, uh, in terms of an application here of math. Make the concepts that you're studying distinctive. What that means is if this is A, then this is not A. If this is this type, what is not this type? Make them very distinctive on what something is and what something is not. If you're studying linear equations, make sure you know the difference between a linear and a quadratic. Elaborate. How does the concept elaborate, or can you elaborate, how does the concept relate to other concepts you've done in the course or to things that you have known? Forming connections across the discipline, across different disciplines and within disciplines. I know in my stat class, we do p-values and we talk about probabilities, but I know in bio uh, 110, I think it is, they talk about probabilities as well when they do Punnett squares, p-values. So how do you you know, connect things across. And that's really as a college liberal arts type of mindset, what we're trying to get you to do is see connections across classes, but then also across the curriculum inside of each class. Um, expectations, this is the biggest one. Um, how are you expected to do the concepts? If you're going to study this approach, but on my exam, I'm going to give you this approach. Why are you studying the approach that you're not going to see on the test? And so what how are you expected to, um, to answer the questions? And then the last thing is more personal. We know that anything that you can relate to yourself and you have a more personal vested interest in you, your discipline, your major, um, the more you will enjoy and the more that you will learn as opposed to memorizing those topics. So I know I tried to pick a topic here that the vast majority of you would be okay with. Um, again, I'm gonna do it for math, but you could apply this to any of your classes. So let me just real briefly, I'm not gonna teach you a linear equation. I'm not gonna teach you about slope, but I'm hoping that a decent amount of you remember or know or have studied this semester, the idea of uh, a linear equation and slope being a rate of change. Whether you're in a calculus class, you do derivatives, derivatives is a slope, a rate of change, an instantaneous rate of change, or you're in an algebra class or even my stat class. But here is how I would think about, not in depth because I'm not, I don't have time to go through each of these super in depth, but I'm gonna show you how to do the deep processing. So the first one is distinctiveness. Making sure you know what slope is and what slope is not. So I have examples here. Um, right there is the definition. Now, probably in a math class, you're not gonna be given defined slope and asked to write it out at Penn State Berks. I, I think in our Math 21, they're probably not gonna ask you to do that. Those of you who are in my stat classes, I, you know I don't ask you for a word-by-word um, a word definition. Now, some of your other classes, psychology, history, uh, other humanities, maybe you do need to have some you know, definitions. But if I'm looking at, I got two examples here. Here's the first example and here's the second one. The first example, if I say fill in the blank, this number would be four. And I think up here, this number is four as well. And the reason that I know that those are both fours is because this here is an example of slope. As the X goes up by one, my Y also goes up or increases by one. As my X goes up by one, my Y goes up by one. So this is an example of slope. And now I think probably the majority of you, maybe it's a little bit harder, but I think you could figure out that this number down here is 16. And this number here is 49 if I was filling the blanks. But this is not an example of slope because I'm not going up a constant rate each time. This is quadratic or I'm squaring the numbers. This is one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared. Five times five is 25. That is not an example 
of a linear relationship or of slope. So you really wanna make sure that whatever topic you're doing, again, if you're in calculus, a derivative, what is a derivative? What's the difference between a first derivative and a second derivative? Um, you know, really making sure you understand what something is, what it shows you and what it doesn't show you and where you would use something else. Don't see any questions here as I continue. So I'm gonna keep going. Um, so that's distinctiveness. Um, beyond distinctiveness, the next one would be elaboration. Make sure you don't just do a problem and that's the problem you did in your notes and that's and you're good to go, right? Up here, there are lots of things that I could think about in terms of slope. This is just a table of values from a math perspective. Here's the equation I might need in order to use two points that are given to me to find the slope. Um, you know, you could derive this with us um, a graph. Here is a picture of a linear equation. How is slope represented on that? So from a math perspective, algebraically, numerically, graphically, those are sort of the three big pillars to different math approaches. Um, again, other disciplines, you could do other things. Um, but elaborate on the topic as you're preparing like study notes. Don't just put an example and think, oh, this is it. Expectations. If I want you to, and this is big, especially if you're in any calculus classes, um, you know, students, oh, I know how to find a derivative, but that's not what we're gonna say, just find the derivative. Oh, here's two points, find the slope. Yeah, I might ask you to do that. I might ask you to find the slope from two points, but this question here is asking the same exact thing but it's a word problem and you have to pick out the two points and you have to apply it. Know what is expected of you. Is it gonna be a multiple choice exam? Is it gonna be a free response? How do you know? Ask, ask your professors, okay? Ask the people who've taken the class before. What am I expected to know? Could it be a multiple choice question or is it a free response? Because knowing what to expect, you will be able to prepare though with those expectations in mind and the last thing make it somewhat personal i mean here's just some examples you know if you're if you like skiing slope going down going up this is more engineering based the pitch of a uh, of a of a roof um, how much you pay per day or per minute for a cell phone anything per something is slope miles per hour um you might not even know this, this is a little yodeling guy from uh, the price is right and for every dollar somebody was off he went up one so i always thought of slope there um so Long story short, that's sort of just a little bit of a framework there um, for how you can, if you, you know, if you try to think about and write on a piece of paper the topics and you apply these four things, you are going to be thinking and studying so much more deeply than what you would be if you were just memorizing stuff. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, keep putting, you know, put anything here in, but I'm going to keep going. What I don't want to do is tell you that my method works for everybody, because that's not true. Okay, I've tried to give you some ideas for how to study to become a better learner as opposed to a memorizer. One size doesn't fit all. You have to figure out. And if you're a freshman, it's your first time you're going through finals, you're probably going to take finals differently now than what you will do three years from now, all right? Because this is the first time you're doing it. But, um, but take note of how you're preparing and if it worked so that next semester, you know what worked, what didn't work, and you can try you know, to alter and make things better. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna to move to the next section, which is what do I study? Um, what should I study? So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna know if your exam is a comprehensive exam or not a comprehensive exam. So a non-comprehensive exam is where, and there are some classes that have this at Berks, your final exam is only on the information you learned after the last test. There are classes like that. Or is your final exam comprehensive, which means it's including the entire curriculum from the whole course? Of course, if it's comprehensive, you're probably going to study and prepare differently than if it's non-comprehensive. I think some of the calculus classes sometimes are non-comprehensive. It just depends on the faculty member. Um, and uh, is the test gonna be multiple choice, essay, short answer, what kind of questions are you expected to ask and what is on the final? If you don't know, ask. I can't repeat that enough, ask, okay? 
Um, most of your math finals are probably cumulative, comprehensive, uh, but maybe not. A um, couple of uh, bits here to focus on while uh, preparing for your exams. If you have not read an entire book and your exams on that book, 23 chapters, say in an English class or something, and you're 23 chapters behind, do not spend the next two or three days trying to read 23 chapters. Learn from your mistakes, figure out, make sure you can do that next semester and do better, uh, but don't spend the night before a final trying to cram, okay? Focus on big concepts from prior exams, okay? Not little things, but big concepts. Focus on big examples in notes. You know, especially in math, if there's a theorem in my stat class, the central limit theorem, that's, a, that's the theorem of stats. You better know what that means. Maybe not by definition, but by application, um, you better know what that means. Um, I also here, we'll leave this up for a second. Um, the math department at Penn State up at University Park, if you go to math.psu.edu, undergraduate courses, and it's linked here, um, and I'll provide this PowerPoint on the Lionside Chat website. But if you go to that link for the math department, they have practice final exams for pretty much every math class that we have at Penn State. Now, granted, they're University Park, University Park tests, so they might not look in terms of the format exactly the same as your professor here at Berks, but the concepts are the same. In my classes, I release, you know, practice exams. Not every faculty member does. So if you don't have a practice math 22 final exam, you could go get some more practice with answer keys here through the University Park Math Department. I'm not sure if other departments in across our camp, uh, Commonwealth, across the camp, uh, Penn State has that, uh, but we do have that in the math department. Um, priorities, okay? Focus on what you hate first. If you really do not want to study for calculus because you're not doing so hot and you, you know, you're just you putting it off, don't do that first. Okay. Study the subjects you don't like or you struggle with first. Prioritize it because that's going to, you know, you're going to make sure you put the effort and the time in where it needs to be. Because if you don't like it, it's probably because you're struggling, right? So prioritize that. Focus um, and, and, you know, save the stuff that you're doing okay and you enjoy for later as a reward. Focus on classes that have heavier weighted finals. I mentioned this morning in my class, my final exam for stats is only 15% of the grade. If you have another uh, class that the final is 40% of the grade, you might want to study for that one a little bit more than mine, right? If you have a B right now in my class and you bomb my final, you're probably not going to drop to a D, maybe a C, um, but it's only worth 15%. So look to your syllabus to see how much the final is worth. And if it's worth a lot, you should be focusing on that class. Likewise, if you have classes that are higher credits, calculus, statistics, physics, some other classes are four credits. The more credits the class is, the more higher that class influences your GPA. So also prioritize not just what the highest percentage of the test of influencing your exam, um, your, your grade is, but also the number of credits that the class is. Um, what's on the class uh, exam? So my biggest suggestion, I see students, there will be students that show up to my final exam and I, don't, I haven't seen them for five or six weeks. They just show up to take the final exam. Go to class this week, okay? Most likely your professors are talking about the final exam this week in class. If they're not, ask, okay? If there's a course review assignment, complete it. The professor has put together a review that they think is important for that topic. That is important to make sure that you get that completed. Ask, 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 okay? Um, you, all the professor can say is, I'm not gonna tell you if that's on it or not, you should know, but ask if a specific topic's on it. Some of you have classes that have learning assistants. So if you have learning assistants in your classes, some of them are running review sessions. Make sure you're going to those. Um, and then last but not least, we are still open in the learning center for one-on-one -on -one appointments. So you can, even if you've never been to the learning center, sign up for, you know, somebody who tutors calculus and you say, hey, this is what I think is on the final. Do you remember? What do you think I should be studying? So you can have a one-on-one -on -one appointment in the learning center. All right. So we only got a couple more things here and then I'll open up to see if there's any questions. Um, but where and when to study. If you have not started studying for finals yet, you are late. You are late by a lot. Um, and 
those of you who are my students know that from day one of the semester, I focus and talk about studying for finals, getting your notes together as you're learning the curriculum so that now we're at showtime. You can open them up and you can start studying. You already made your notes, you made your test corrections, right? So if you have not started, you're late, you still have a week, right? But you're late, which means this is urgent. Um, Preparation for finals begins way before finals week, as I talked about, and I often preach that um, think of finals week, not as week, but as plural as weeks, okay? Especially if, if you, you know, Thanksgiving would have been a great time if you haven't over the Thanksgiving. I know, you, you know, we had downtime, you had a week off, it was much needed, but that's a great time to prepare for finals. You cannot cram all the information into, you know, in, at the college level. So, you know, we want to avoid that. Start getting organized now, right? Put in, start making some, you know, some organizing your notes and information and big picture concept maps type of things for what is going to be on your test. Um, in terms of studying, find a comfortable place to work. And by that, you know, even if you're taking all your classes at home online, maybe, you know, you can mute yourself um, and, you know, your dog or your brother or sister interrupts you. It's not that big a deal if you're in the middle of class, you maybe missed a little bit. But when you're studying for finals, you need to find a place that's quiet, that's comfortable. Our campus is open. Even though we don't have classes, the library and the classrooms are open. So if you do live close to campus, you might want to take advantage of just, you know, popping onto campus, sitting in a classroom for, you know, however many hours you want so that you're not being distracted. I know uh, Sonia in the Learning Center talks about studying in chunks. She calls it the 25-5, 25 minutes distraction free, followed by a five minute break. If you say, hey, I'm gonna study for the next six hours and you don't take any breaks, it's not gonna be very beneficial for you. She talks about it this way. Those 25 minutes, no phone, no friends, no fun, okay? Leave your phone off, leave it somewhere else, don't have friends around you um, and don't have any fun. Study to those 25 minutes, really make them distraction free, then take a five minute break, grab a snack, check your social media, do what you want, put your phone away and do another 25 minutes. You start to study with that, you will start to see the level of productivity skyrocket. And then the last comment here is, I know some of you might have jobs, I'm hoping, you have tried to minimize the number of hours you're working this upcoming weekend or next week. Learn to say no. Do not overcommit yourself, especially with your employment, your job. Um, if you go to your employer and say, hey, I need a couple of days extra off to study for finals, most employers are probably going to be okay with that. So don't overcommit yourself this weekend. You have time this week and this weekend to get ready. Don't overcommit yourself. Um, last thing um, that I want to talk about is during the exam, you know, of course, preview the test, demonstrate big ideas. So even if you're not sure about something and it's a free response question, demonstrate your knowledge of big ideas. Even if you're not sure that it might not be a correct answer, show steps, show your work. Um, don't leave anything blank. Um, check, check if it allows. I typically say this during a face-to-face -face exam, and I think I would probably say this during a remote exam, stay for the entire exam time. If you take the exam and you don't know what's going on and you only spend 10, 15 minutes on it, and then you leave to the faculty member, that's kind of like a slap in the face. Like you only spent 15 minutes on my exam and that's how much you care about my class. Um, so my suggestion would be that you, you know, prepare and try to fill up as much as you can um, and stay for if not the entire exam, pretty close to the entire exam. All right, so that's about 45 minutes, which is usually what we go here and we then open it up for question and answer. I didn't see anything as I've been going through this chat, um, but I'll leave you with this comment that studying is not a spectator sport. You cannot just sit there and think, oh, everything's gonna be fine and not actually you know, participate. Um, so it's like, it's, it's show time, it's go time, however you wanna talk about it, it's time to play. Um, and so you have, um, you know, lots of resources. I'm hoping we have a, a strong uh, finish to the semester. Um, at th with that, I'm going to see if you have any questions. Um, I don't see anything yet, but I'll, I'll give you a second here. Typically, we go back and forth with, um, with another Lionside Chat moderator, um, but I'm alone here today. 
So I'm going to see if there's any questions that come in. Okay. Give you another second here. Uh, while I um, see if anything shows up here, um, I just want to make sure that you are, you know, prepared, stay healthy, you know, get rest, all those things, you know, beyond the studying that are so important for success as well. Um, but there's lots of faculty members and staff that are here to help. If you're not sure, you can always reach out to me, you can reach out to the Lionside chat, and we can hook you up with who you need to. All right, so in the interest of studying for finals, I don't wanna waste more of your time. Waste time, hopefully this wasn't a waste of time. I don't wanna take more of your time because you got time to start preparing. Um, so uh, let me mention a couple of things here. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, this is recorded. You can always look back on our website. We actually are going to have a special Lionside chat, one more for this semester that happens um, uh, next Monday. It's actually during finals. It'll be um, at common hour. I don't have the time here, but it'll be a common hour. Um, it's uh, Dr. Hillkirk. Um, it is his last um, uh, semester here with us as he's retiring. So he will be doing um, a retirement type of uh, farewell where he explains his perspective reflections and lessons learned from his last um, 20 years or so, um, or, or 10 years at uh, Penn State Berks in terms of um, higher ed. Um, so I do have a question show up here. It says for a real question, how would you recommend allotting time to study subject by subject, day by day? Um, so that question, I would definitely recommend putting a plan together. Um, uh, I would recommend um, making sure that you are prioritizing when you have your exam. So if you don't have an exam till Thursday of next week, and you have all day Wednesday with no exams, you probably don't want to take too much time right now to get ready for that Thursday exam. Um, so I would, it would all be based on where your grades are, how much that course um, exam is counted, in terms of if it's you know 40% of your grade, you wanna spend time on that and then lay that all out in a form. If you lay all that out, here's the exams I have, here's the percentage of what their grades are and here's, oh, it's only a one credit class. I don't need too much emphasis on that. You then should see the proportion. I mean, I'm a statistician. You could take the, the number of exams and look at the proportion of time. If you have a 40% of your final exam or is, is the grade in this class and only 20% here, you should be spending 20 per, tw uh, twice as much time on the 40% as the 20%. So if you create a schedule um, and you have three hours each night and you have a 40%, a 20%, and a 10%, you know, an hour and a half would be the 40%. Okay, depending on where you're at. And it's all different for different people, depending on your, you know, where you're at. Some of you might need, uh, you know, need, need to do really well to get a C and some of you, you know, a final exam, eh, you can get a C on the final exam and still get a B or an A. So it would be based on where you're at in your classes as well. Good question though. Anything else coming in? Anybody else have any other questions? All right, so um, we also next semester will be running um, not a we are series, but we will be running what's called majorly prepared. Um, this is will be where we showcase all of our majors and uh, student research and upperclassmen and even freshmen who will be sharing um, information about their program. So you can get to see if you're undecided major and you're interested in this or you're thinking about you might want to switch a major. Uh, we're going to run. We'll have one or two each week for the spring semester uh, where you'll get to hear from faculty. And you'll get to hear from students um, in those majors to showcase what we have here at Berks. Um, of course, along the way, um, you know, we, we are here to get you uh, a degree in four years. And if you stay at Berks, great. If we can help you, um, you know, pick a major here. If not, we are also here to help um, facilitate your connection making to University Park, wherever the campus you go to. But that's what to expect in the spring. Um, I am going to sign off now. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful finals week, a wonderful break. Um, reach out to the Lionside chats if we can do anything um, and have a wonderful um, time off. So um, come chat with us soon and stay safe. Uh, Till next time, um, this is the Lionside chats signing off.